Welcome to the GBC podcast. I know we've been working through our series on the basics of the Baptist faith, and as you can see, things are a little bit different today. Uh, we are also snowed in like most folks around here, so we're making the do the best that we can, and uh, we'll be releasing this still as normal, but Tonight, we have uh, Dawson Hull with us as we're uh, remotely talking about the priesthood of the believer. We've been talking through all kinds of great doctrines that help us think through our Baptist faith, but, but even more broadly, what separates a Christian faith from a non-Christian faith. And today, we're talking about the priesthood of the believer. And this is one that is pretty distinctive for Baptists, uh, but I believe it, it fits within the broader context of Christianity as a whole for, for most denominations. And this is a neat one because it is, it's a little different than some of the others. We've talked a lot about the Baptist faith and message, a document that helps us distill the commonalities across Baptist churches. And this is something that's not explicitly talked about in the Baptist faith and message. In fact, it's not even specifically spoken of in our constitution as Germantown Baptist Church. Our, our founding documents don't necessarily talk about it in our articles of faith, which actually are just the same as the Baptist faith and message. Uh, but there is an interesting thing that there, there is such a foundational principle here that it shows up in the preamble to the Baptist faith and message, and it shows up in the definition of the character of Germantown Baptist Church in our Constitution. So it's a, it's a different thing than some of the others that we've talked about. In fact, it's kind of a, a foundational piece to some of the doctrines that we've talked about. But before we get to that, let me read you a couple of texts of Scripture that, that really give us a, a glimpse of, of what the priesthood of the believer is about and where, where some of these key texts come from. Uh, first is in 1 Peter chapter 2. Verse 9, but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. And also in uh, Revelation, we see a great text in Revelation uh, chapter 1, verse 6, and he made us to be a kingdom priests to his God and Father to him be the glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. There are several, several other texts in Scripture that talk about the priesthood of the believer and how Jesus, through the cross, through what he accomplished for us, we're able to boldly approach him. We are able to open God's word and read it and interpret it and apply it. We're able to minister these great things. But as we get in this conversation, let me read to you the preamble, a piece of the preamble of the Baptist faith and message that, that talks about the importance of the priesthood of the believer. And then I'm going to ask Dawson to read from our GBC Constitution on the character of Germantown Baptist. Baptist Church. But first, listen to this preamble from the Baptist Faith and Message. We honor the principles of soul competency and the priesthood of believers, affirming together both our liberty in Christ and our accountability to each other under the word of God. So again, not really in the text of the Baptist Faith and Message, but a lead into it, identifying that this is an important principle to govern all of that's happening uh, in the rest of the document. Dawson, won't you read for us the, uh, the piece from the GBC Constitution about the character of GBC? Yeah, it says, this church accepts the biblical doctrine known as the priesthood of the believer. The doctrine holds that every true believer has direct access to the Lord God through Jesus Christ and that he speaks through his word to every true believer and that his Holy Spirit resides within every true believer. Furthermore, the Lord God seeks to work in and through every believer in the world. So several key aspects there. We see that it's something that Jesus did for us, that we get to now be intercessors. We get to be ones who go straight to God. We don't need someone between us and God. We, we have the ability to open God's word and to read it, to interpret it for ourselves. We don't need someone else to always interpret it for us. We have access to God's word directly, but also we get a chance to minister to others. It's not something set aside just for certain people. It's something that we're all called to do. And then in some ways, we're, we're moving back to the image image of God, where we are a picture of God to the others. And that's the function the priests served early on um, before Jesus came, was the priests were there to represent God to the people. So in so many ways, we all get to do that now, as we were designed to be in the image of God, imaging and showing God's nature to everybody. So Dawson, as you think about the priesthood of the believer, what are some aspects to you that really stand out that are really precious to you? I think it's just really, really neat because this is, it tells us who we are in Christ, you know, and if you look all the, all the way through, through God's word, you know, you read in the, the old Testament about, um, 
you know, about all of the, the priests, you know, the Levite tribe and the, and the sacrifices that they had to make. And you read about the, in the temple or even in the tabernacle before that, there was the Holy of Holies that only the high priest could go in and once a year and, and, you know, all, all of these things. And then, then you get to the time when Jesus died on the cross. And, and uh, we know at, at that moment, we read about that curtain, the veil, uh, that shield of the Holy of Holies, uh, was barrier. symbolically torn yeah um from top to bottom and and it you know illustrating the access that we have to god that now we no longer need a priest to go on our behalf because jesus is our high priest he went on our behalf and so that gives us access to god the father that's that's when we we, we can pray um and we pray in jesus's name you know, and, and we know that Jesus is our, our intercessor, our mediator between God and man, but, but we, we don't need uh, an earthly, uh, we don't need a, a priest because we all have the Holy Spirit, true believers have the Holy Spirit in, inside of us. So that's, that's just a, a really, really awesome thing to know that thanks to the cross, um, we can go directly and have fellowship with the Father and bring to him our our uh, our requests, our concerns, and our praises. And, and to go back to that picture from the Holy of Holies you just referenced in the, the veil that was torn before Jesus, the Holy Spirit resided there. And, and at times he was poured out to be used in a certain situations as a to help carry out God's purpose in a person's life for very specific times. But then because of what Jesus did and that veil was torn, now we are the temple and the Holy Spirit is in all believers and what an amazing change that is. And he's always with us. It's not just for the moments as we saw in the Old Testament, but he's always with us, helping us carry out the high calling that we have uh, to be holy as Jesus was holy, to, to be like him. And, mm -hmm. and to, because of the cross that we get to be wrapped in his holiness for that the God, the father sees Jesus's perfection, Jesus's perfectly lived life that fulfilled everything in the law that he sees that on us and then to have the holy spirit dwelling in us and to carry out the call to make disciples and, and part of that is representing god to others and showing his love so that they will be drawn to his love and we can give them the words of the good news what a way we get to be a part of the ministry of reconciliation the ministry of helping people come to know uh, know god as their savior what an amazing thing that that we get to minister. We're we're all called to minister, right? So thinking about our ministries and the areas that you and I work with, Dawson, what are some of the ways where you love seeing that that fulfilled in the folks that you shepherd and lead as they are ministering to others? Mm -hmm. Well, you know that's that's the thing is is the uh, you know with uh, that we we spoke earlier about the opportunities that we have that access to the fathers that, that being being priests. Uh, carries with it an opportunity but also responsibility and i think mm -hmm. when we when we think of the word priest uh we we think you know okay translate that into our you know um you know protestant uh um culture and context we think okay so priests are the pastors and so does that mean that we're all pastors well i, I think it it shows this is this is one one of the things that we we you know uh in the in the worship Worship Arts Ministry at, at GBC is we we um, encourage people that that we are all you know this, as as priests it's not we, we have a, we have a responsibility to share Christ's love and like like you said to minister to carry out and so you know we do that uh, in a in a lot of ways through through our music and through leading people to worship God you know in the orchestra in the uh, um, in our conservatory as our you know, our conservatory uh, teachers are the hands and the feet of Jesus. We are carrying out that responsibility to um, to share Christ, to be an ambassador for Christ. You know, and, and that's that's that, you know, yes, we have access to the father. So that's great. We can we can have that fellowship with him. But also because of that, we are called to um, to live out the Christ life and to live out loud. For others and to lead, you know, and help help people help people worship, encourage them to worship, be be uh, the, an example of God's love to to others. And so that's that's you know one of the things that that all of us believers have 
uh, have on us now as a responsibility to to carry that out. And your ministry area, they get to help usher people in to the throne room as they help lead them in worship and and set the stage for where worship can happen. Not that worship has to happen with, through music and all together as a, as a church family, but it's just one of those neat ways they get to minister and to to call others in to worship. What a what a neat opportunity that is that we have. But like you said, there's a responsibility, but there's also a distinction of roles. Even though we're all called to minister, there are still the distinctions of roles within the church family. Uh, in scripture, it talks about the body of Christ, and, and some are called to be prophets and to be teachers and to all the different kinds of giftings and calls to be deacons, other, other ways that we're all called to serve and called to minister, but there are distinct roles, distinct functions within the church family. Not that they're any better, but they're just unique and different. We're all called to our different peace. So yes, we're all called to minister. And at the same time, there is a distinction for pastors and for teachers and for deacons and different roles that we carry out together. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this is a doctrine that helps lay a foundation for some of the other core Baptist doctrines, like the congregational polity that we have, that we are a congregationally affirmed, a congregationally together knit church family that is is in a sense led by or affirmed by the direction of the congregation. It's not, there's not an outside entity. Uh, we are an autonomous church family, so there's no one above us besides Christ telling us and leading us where to go. And uh, so we have this where we are autonomous, and that's that's a piece of what it means to be a priesthood of believer, knowing that everyone sitting in the pew, everyone who is a believer in Christ, who's part of the GBC church family, has a, has a voice, has a a piece and a role in the advancement of the gospel through Germantown Baptist Church. It's not just the pastor, and yes, the pastor is an important role in that process, but he is a role, not the role. And, and together, we, we follow his leadership, and we, we, we follow him as he follows Christ. So there's a, an interconnectivity, a, an opportunity, and a responsibility that goes along with us all being priests. The other thing that I love is that because of the priesthood of the believer, we have access directly to God's word. And what a gift it is we have it, God's word in our own language that we can open it up and we can apply it. Now, of course, there are pitfalls in all of this, because what if we go too far with it and say, well, I want to interpret scripture this way, which might be different than Baptists traditionally have, or even Christians anywhere have, and I want to apply this text in this way. Now, that's, there are points where we take the priesthood of the believer too far, and there are dangers to it. We have to weigh it in context of whatever else is going on in Scripture, in context of us falling in line with a tradition that, that is how this is typically seen. Now, sometimes uh, we, we go back and we read it like, wow, I've never seen that before, and that's the Holy Spirit leading us. But usually it's not going to be unique to anybody in the world for all time. Uh, God has been speaking all throughout history through God's Word, and for it to be out in left field and me to take a whole new interpretation and still say, well, I'm still a good Southern Baptist, because I, I have the ability to do that, uh, that puts me in a, in a danger zone, because there, there is a, a typical way that we understand and interpret the bulk of, of what Scripture has to say, and that we've kind of talked about how that does uh, differentiate between different denominations or different religions and how we apply and interpret. So that's one of those pitfalls, and of course, another pitfall would be that we say, well, I don't need anybody I've got God's word and I can be a minister and I can go out and minister to other people and I don't need a church family. And of course, that's also a pitfall we want to avoid because we want to make sure we're still connected. There's a, there's a connectivity together in this priesthood. It's not just the priesthood of the believer, but it's also the priesthood of the believers and how together we are a, a people of priests that are out carrying on the mission that God has given us. So again, responsibility and opportunity with this amazing gift of the priesthood of believers. Dawson, any other thoughts that you have that you want to share about the priesthood of the believer today? Yeah, just just that. I mean, just that you you just touched on. I mean, it's a priesthood, the same way that a brotherhood or a neighborhood is, speaks to that more more than one. And I, I think it 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 speaks that speaks to the community that believers must have for us to, as iron sharpens iron, to, to hold each other accountable, to edify one another, and to help, because living the Christ life is hard, and it's, it's, uh, yes, we have this, these wonderful opportunities, this access to God, the Father, but, but like you said, sometimes we misstep, sometimes we abuse our authority, you know, when I read my Bible, 
um, there, there are things that, you know, just I, I can, you know, quickly understand. And there, then there are times where, you know, there's something right. Okay. This is, this is something I, I need to, you know, delve a little bit deeper into understand. And, and that's, that's where I lean on, on, you know, the uh, other, other people that have, um, you know, helped to interpret and study that particular passage and things like that. And that's where you're, you know, both, both in the community within our local uh, church of Germantown Baptist church, but then also the all believers across, you know, similar denominations and, and, and faiths that, that believe what, you know, what, what we believe. And there may be some small things that, you know, that, that we, um, you know, uh, see differently or interpret differently, but, you know, all of us as Christians, as the church um, can, um, can come together and to help edify one another and help us, you know, understand things better, interpret, hold accountable, encourage. That's that's all uh, a very important part. So I think Christians, we can't be an island. We have we need each other to uh, to live this life. We're we're made to be a body. We're made to be interconnected. And the priesthood of the believer helps focus both on the autonomy and the interconnection that we have as believers. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Dawson. And thank you for join, tuning in to the GBC podcast. We'll be back next week with another Basics of the Baptist Faith.